Yo, how's it going everybody? Thank you guys so much for watching all these videos. The views are crazy. But anyways, welcome to the breakdown of episode four. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get straight into it. Daenerys orders the Dothraki soldiers to kill all of the Golden Company since Dario revealed Cersei's true plan. Daenerys cannot use her dragons to kill the Golden Company herself because of their ballistas. A battle breaks out, but the Dothraki are able to slaughter most of the Golden Company. Some of the men from the Golden Company capture Jaime Lannister and they ride off to White Harbor where some of Euron's fleet await them. They had orders to bring him back alive to King's Landing. Arya Stark is still badly injured from her fight against the mountain. The maester at Winterfell tells Jon there is nothing he can do to prevent her from dying. Melisandre arrives in Winterfell from Volantis. Davos wants her executed immediately, but she promises she can save Arya. She remembers Arya from years ago. Jon allows her to help Arya, which she does, but Arya will not be able to fight for some time. Jorah and Dario volunteer to ride through the night to King's Landing to try and free Jaime Lannister. Varys gives them plans about how they can enter the city through the tunnels under the city. Varys still has a copy of the map him and Tyrion used at the Battle of Blackwater Bay. The Golden Company arrive in King's Landing with Jaime. He is greeted by Euron Greyjoy, who then escorts Jaime to the Red Keep. Euron is told to leave while Cersei tells Jaime that him being captured was a trap in hopes of luring Daenerys to King's Landing in case the first plan failed. Cersei plans on burning the entire city when they arrive. Jaime is disgusted by this revelation, so he grabs Cersei around the throat and strangles her to death. Euron then enters the room laughing and clapping. He has Jaime thrown into the black cells where Ned was held. Jorah and Dario arrive in King's Landing prepared to break Jaime Lannister free, but their escape mission fails. Euron has Dario killed immediately and he captures Jorah and has him imprisoned in the black cells as well. Melisandre goes to Jon in Winterfell's courtyard. Melisandre then tells Jon that while she was in Volantis, she saw something disturbing in the flames. She says that she saw a boy wolf tied to a weirwood tree. She proceeds to tell Jon that this boy wolf is the Great Other's champion, or the Night King. She says his name is Brandon. Jon is completely enraged by that and sentences her to death. Melisandre asks for death by fire. She says it is the purest death. Daenerys obliges. Davos watches with Princess Shireen's burnt stag in his hand. Now that Cersei is dead, Euron declares himself King of the Seven Kingdoms with Kyburn as his hand. Euron has a letter prepared for Daenerys. Cersei is dead. He has Jorah, Jaime, Yara, and Theon as his prisoners. He wants Daenerys to come to King's Landing to be his new queen. If she declines, he promises to send her all of their heads. Daenerys refuses his offer anyways, and she vows to kill Euron and set them all free. And that wraps up the leak for episode 4. So this is actually kind of where I start to see this more as a fan fiction type thing instead of a leak because, well, we'll just break it down step by step. All right, so in the beginning, Daenerys basically learned in the last episode of Cersei's actual plan, so she orders the Dothraki soldiers to kill all the Golden Company. That makes sense. She can't use the dragons because of all their ballistas, which makes a lot of sense, but a battle breaks out between the Dothraki and the Golden Company, and the Dothraki slaughter most of them. Some of the men from the Golden Company capture Jaime Lannister. Now, do you guys really think he's going to be captured two times? Like, first time he was captured? Yeah, I mean, I guess it can happen. He gets his hand cut off. The second time, though, I just, I don't know. I guess he would be more apt to be captured just because he doesn't fight nearly as well. But it just seems like they're putting that character through a lot. So then, obviously, they take him to Euron's fleet and they have orders to bring him back to King's Landing. That makes sense. I mean, Cersei would want him back for sure if he gets captured in the first place. And that's a big if, like I'm still not convinced that Jamie will end up being captured again, but in one of the leaks that everybody is thinking is actually true, someone is in chains, so it could be Jamie. I don't really think it would be John, but you never know how this is actually going to play out. So anyways, then it flips back over to Arya. Basically, she's dying. The maester at Winterfell says there's nothing that he can really do about it, but <laughs> we're lucky because Melisandre comes back to Winterfell and basically says that she can save her. Davos wants her executed, Jon definitely doesn't want her there, but she promises that she can help Arya, which she does, and then Arya is basically just healing throughout the rest of the episode. So right here, I don't honestly know why Jorah and Arya would volunteer. I mean, they don't really have much use for the Kingslayer, so I can't really see them volunteering, 
but I can see them being the two that go on the mission. Uh, Dario for sure, maybe not so much even Jora really. He's getting kind of old and stuff, but Dario definitely is really good with these stealthy missions. But anyways, they volunteer apparently to go and free Jamie Lannister. Varys gives them the plans about how they can enter the city through the tunnels. He still has a copy of the map. I guess he just happened to like tuck it under his robe <laughs> when he came <laughs> to see uh, Daenerys. Who knows? Maybe he just packed it up in his bags <laughs> when he came. So anyways, he basically gives them the copy and they depart. So then this is kind of where it gets like, like everything up to this point, I could kind of talk through and maybe add in some extra details and maybe make it make sense. But this is where it gets a little bit, just a little too crazy. So basically they fast forwards a little bit because the Golden Company arrives in King's Landing with Jamie. He's greeted by Euron Greyjoy. I wouldn't really call it a greeting. But then uh, he escorts Jamie to the Red Keep where Cersei is waiting. So this right here is the crazy part. Cersei basically tells Jamie that him being captured was a trap in hopes of luring Daenerys to King's Landing. Daenerys is not going to come all the way to King's Landing just to save Jamie. Like she should know that. Like she should 100% know that. So that definitely is off. I can't see that really happening. And then basically Cersei plans on burning the entire city when they arrive. That's what she tells Jamie. So now we know the real use for all the wildfire. Now, I can see her making a lot of wildfire. I can see her planning on burning them as soon as they step foot onto King's Landing. You gotta remember, like, she just had a miscarriage. Her, all of her other kids are dead. She's a widow. Jamie feels like he's probably slipping away from her. They're just kind of being divided apart and stuff. So she could probably, like, there's probably a switch in her head that's just flipped. Like, she's probably just mental. So I could definitely see her wanting to do that. But just leading up to that, like trying to capture Jamie <laughs> to set a trap for Daenerys to come to King's Landing, nah, I just, nah, I don't think so. And then the fact that this is what causes Jamie to just snap and grab Cersei around the throat and strangle her to death, I I feel like it's going to be more than that. Like it's going to, it's going to last a little bit longer than just one episode where he kind of comes back and basically snaps and kills her. Now I do think he's going to kill her. I think this 100% happens. I think they're going to fulfill the prophecy of Maggie the Frog and he is going to strangle her to death. And uh, that's actually not in the show, the prophecy, that part of the prophecy, it's only in the books, but I still think they'll kind of play that out. I hope they do anyways. So then Euron comes back in. He basically is like, thanks dude, I'm now the king. We're putting you in the black cell where Ned was held. So then we flip back to Jorah and Dario. They just get to King's Landing, prepared to break Jamie Lannister free, but they basically fell. Now, I don't really see I don't know, there would obviously be a lot more details and stuff in the show, but I, I guess I could kind of see this happening if they actually do depart. I don't really see them going on a rescue mission for Jamie Lannister um, because they should know that Cersei is not going to hurt him at all. Like, what is Cersei actually going to do? She's not going to kill Jamie. So anyways, they basically fell. It says Euron has Dario killed immediately, which I guess I could see, and then captures Jorah because he does know that Jorah and Daenerys are a little bit closer and throws him in the Black Cells as well. That's basically his best plan, just to kind of capture as many good people as he can. So then it flips back to Melisandre telling Jon about a vision she's seen while she was in Volantis in the flames. She basically says that Bran becomes the Night King and he's tied to a weirwood tree. Now I don't feel like they're going to foreshadow this happening so soon if they plan on it to be the finale. Like that would basically just be telling everybody the ending and there would be like really no hype for, you know, the last episode. So I can't really see that happening, but I can see him actually sentencing her to death. It would be kind of a long stretch for John's character, but obviously he already basically said to stay away. And she did mention something about uh, she has to return to Westeros once more to face her end. So I'm not going to lie. I like her character quite a bit, so it'd kind of be bittersweet seeing her die. But at the same time, I really like Davos too, and I feel like he would finally feel like justice has been served because it says that he's just watching with Princess Shireen's burnt stag in his hand. So I'm not gonna lie, that would be a pretty cool scene, but man, I hate thinking about that scene. Like the worst thing in Game of Thrones, I think was that scene where she's burned alive. Like, I don't know, like <laughs> I just felt so bad for it. I know it's not real, but it gets me every time, man. So then in the last part, it switches back over to King's Landing, basically showing that Cersei is dead and that Euron has declared himself as King of the Seven Kingdoms with Kyburn as his hand. Not too sure if him and Kyburn would still really be hanging out. I feel like Kyburn would be kind of pissed that, you know, Cersei's dead. But then again, you never know. Kyburn kind of seems like a suck up. But anyways, Euron basically has a letter prepared telling Daenerys that he has Jorah, Jaime, Yara, and Theon as his prisoners. And he will cut off their heads and send them to her if she doesn't become his new queen. 
So this part I don't really know about either. Like I don't know if all these people could actually end up like as prisoners. Like that's quite a lot of people that would probably end up having to die because there's no way that Daenerys is going to be able to set them all free. Like if I was Euron, the first thing that I would do as soon as I seen her marching on King's Landing or, you know, refuse, just kill him. You know what I mean? So I don't really know if all that goes down, like Jorah, Jaime, Yara, and Theon all dying at the same time, but you never know. <laughs> I mean, you really never know with this show. So anyways, that pretty much wraps up this breakdown. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. This was a very long one. I didn't think any episode was going to be as long as the last one, but looks like we did it. <laughs> anyways, this has been Lycan Studios. We'll talk to you guys later. Peace.